What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and today we're going to be doing the New York Jets uh, season recap for the 2016 through 2017 NFL season and 2017 preview. Quickly before I even go on, uh, I had a lot of comments in my last video talking about Sean McVay and um, how I called him Scott McVay and then Tremaine Johnson, how I called him Tremaine McBride. Listen, I, I was extremely tired that day. Um, I naturally said Tremaine uh, McBride because Tremaine McBride is a former New York Giant and that, you know, I'm more used to saying, tr when I say Tremaine, I, I'm more used to saying McBride at the end than Johnson. So that, that kind of slipped out of my head right there. And then uh, I don't know what was going through my mind. I mean, I had it on the paper, Sean McVay. I knew who Sean McVay was. I knew who he was for uh, a couple years now. And yeah, I just... I, I had no explanation for you guys. I'm sorry about that. A lot of you guys were saying in the comments, um, mentioning that to me. I didn't notice until I started, I watched the video back after I published it. But um, I, I'm sorry about that, guys. And I hope, hopefully that, that, that doesn't happen again. I've actually had, had that happen to me a couple times in other videos uh, with other people. Um, but I don't think a lot of you guys noticed because I ramble on all the time. I don't think you guys, you know, you know, uh, pay attention to 100% of what I say and understandably because I talk a lot but um, <laughs> yeah you guys got me on that one but um, I'm sorry about that guys alright so New York Jets the beginning of the season the New York Jets I thought the New York Jets were gonna have a better season with Ryan Fitzpatrick coming back um, now I think I when I made the prediction Ryan Fitzpatrick wasn't actually signed yet but I, I had the feeling that the, he was going to be signed um, he's basically stood out the whole offseason uh, for $12 million and wound up stealing $12 million straight from the New York Jets front office because um, he did absolutely nothing. Uh, he was part of the quarterbacks that just didn't perform uh, this year for the New York Jets and the Jets really need to target a quarterback coming up in the offseason and I suggest they draft them. They have to draft one. They, they can't keep dealing with these quarterbacks that are somewhat good and uh, maybe they can get them somewhere, just like the Texans. They need, they need to get a franchise quarterback, someone that they can keep there, someone they can build around for quite a long time. Ryan Fitzpatrick, I mean, I, I, mean, I can see what they wanted. They had a good team around, around him and um, they knew that he was going to be a long-term answer, but they just, I guess they just wanted to get a playoff run going or whatever they could have. Like last year, they could have. Um, but this year they just didn't get, get it done. They were very bad, and that's it's just not the just the offense's fault. Uh, the defense played pretty bad uh, this year too. But um, they definitely uh, underperformed compared to uh, uh, two years ago. So um, yeah, I had them going nine and seven in my prediction. That's pretty much why I thought and. Ryan Fitzpatrick, I thought Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker would come out and perform like they did uh, the year before that. They were statistically the best wide receiver duo in the NFL. And then um, the defense, I thought the defense was going to be top notch like it was the year before, but it wound up not being so good. Uh, they were 28th in, in points uh, allowed this year, uh, average points allowed. So 28th in the league. And Darrell Revis is falling off a cliff. Uh, we'll get into Darrell Revis later with his... Um, with his uh, little allegation going on with the whole fight thing. I don't really know the details on that, but uh, moving on. Um, their actual record, 4-12, and 12, so, so let's get into the team stats. We've got um, the offense scoring 17.2 points a game. That's 30th in the league. Total yards, 329.2. That's 26th in the league. Passing yards, 216.6. That's 27th in the league. And rushing 112.6, that is 12th in the league. Um, they had a great, a good, a good rushing game with Matt Forte and Bilal Powell, who really came on this year. The quarterbacks, is, it just wasn't getting done. Uh, I was, I was actually surprised with what they did because the Jets' offensive line was pretty banged up, especially from the tackle positions. Um, it was, it was not looking good at all. There was a lot of, uh, you know names that no one has even heard of, you know, starting at left tackle. So um, the fact that they were able to get the run game going um, is, is pretty decent. They did allow quite a few sacks, quite a bit of sacks, but um, they got the run game going. They're 12th in the league in running, so um, they, did, they did well with what they had. 
Uh, defense, they are allowing 25.6 points a game. It's 28th in the league. Total yards allowed, they only allowed 342.4. That's 11th in the league, so pretty good when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to yards allowed. And then uh, passing yards allowed, 243.6. That's 17th in the league. And then rushing yards allowed, 98.8. So under 100, that's 11th in the league. So they did pretty well defensively. Like I said, their defense wasn't that bad. Um, but it was definitely, they definitely underperformed compared to uh, two years ago. So, uh, or a year ago, whatever, however you want to say it, the, the season before this one. So, basically what these numbers t uh, scream out to you is not, uh, not as many yards allowed, but a lot of points allowed. That usually is the reason of the offense uh, turning the ball over and, you know, giving the ball to the opponents in plus territory and uh, things like that. So that could be a reason. And uh, 25.6, I mean, that's no excuses there. I mean, come on. And your offense going to uh, mess up so much that you're allowing that many points. But, um, yeah, let's go on to their best wins. They really didn't have any decent wins, so I just chose they swept the Bills. That's always a good thing to sweep an opponent in your division, um, trying to gain some dominance in the division. Not like that you will as long as Tom Brady is still on the Patriots. But, um you swept the Bills, uh, good job on that one. The Bills were almost a playoff team, so uh, that's an accomplishment there. Worst loss, the Colts getting beat by the Colts 41-10. to The Colts gave you a beatdown, and, you know, their roster is probably worse than yours. Um, and the Colts actually didn't really do that well this year. Uh, none of the players really did well this year. And, um, I mean, T.Y. I mean, he's the leading receiver this year, but... Um, Still, the Colts were almost a playoff team, but they still, you know, were a pretty, you know, average team. And the fact that an average team beat another, some, I, I would say the Jets are a below average team. But the fact that they beat them 41 to 10 is pretty ridiculous. So I, I would say that's your worst loss there. Uh, let's go on to the player stats. Passing leaders, we got Ryan Fitzpatrick with 2,710 yards, 56.6 completion percentage, 12 touchdowns, 17 interceptions, and sacked. 19 times Bryce Petty 100 sorry 809 yards 56.4 completion percentage three touchdowns and seven interceptions with 13 sacks he got sacked 13 times so um yeah pretty terrible quarterback play and that's why I say they definitely need to target a quarterback in this year's draft they really need to a starting caliber quarterback there's a couple of them out there you got to pull the trigger quick if you got to trade up then you got to trade up uh, it's really, I mean, this defense could get a lot better if, if they were motivated by the offense, someone, you know, that they could depend on on the uh, offensive side of the football. And um, they got some good players on their offense and defense. They just need a quarterback, man. They really need a quarterback. That's not the only thing they, le they need, but they definitely need a corner, uh, quarterback. Rushing leaders, you got Matt Forte, 218 carries for 813 yards, a 3.7 yard per carry average, and seven touchdowns, had a decent year as a first year Jet. And uh, yeah, not a thousand yards, but um, I think he missed two or three games too, but he probably would have gotten over a thousand yards if he had he played those two games, but he had a pretty decent year, 3.7 yard average. You don't like to see that from your starting running back, but let's get on to Bilal Powell. Bilal Powell had a good year, only 131 carries for 722 yards, 5.5 yard average, and three touchdowns. He did work this year. Um, Matt Forte is coming back for the 2017 season, but I, I expect to see a lot of Bilal Powell. Uh, Bilal Powell has been with the Jets for quite a while now, and he's just never hit that mark to be a starting running back. Running backs have com uh, come and they've gone, but Bilal Powell has still always been that number two running back, and um, you you want to see more, pr more production from Bilal Powell, and you got that this year. Hopefully he can do the same, if not more, the next year. Receiving leaders, you got Quincy Inunua is your leading receiver this year uh, with 587 receptions on, um, 500 receptions, wow. 500, uh, no, that's Robbie Anderson, my bad. 857 yards for 58 receptions and four touchdowns. 
Um, he had a great year, but that's not what you want to see. 800 yards is not what you want to see from your leading receiver. Um, Quinty Anuwa is a good receiver. Don't get me wrong. I mean, but that, that's not, not, I'm not even saying it as, it as if it's his fault, but definitely Brandon Marshall should have stepped up, gotten more yards, so on and so forth. Uh, he was a second leading receiver with 788 yards with three touchdowns. Then he got Robbie Anderson. I uh, believe he was a free agent, undrafted free agent. He did very well this year for an undrafted free agent. 587 yards and 42 receptions um, and two touchdowns. And then you got Bilal Powell and Matt Forte combining for just about 600 yards receiving and three touchdowns. So they did pr uh, pretty good work when it comes to the receiving game as well as the rushing game. So let's move on to the defensive side of the football. You got your tackle leaders. No 100 plus tacklers this year um, for the Jets um, but David Johnson was their leading tackler with 95 tackles total moving on to the sack leader you got Leonard Williams who is a complete beast didn't have the great year he was supposed to have in his rookie year but really came on this year um, you'd hope that he sticks around for a while and you know he's, he's gonna be one of those great uh, Jet defenders that you know have been a pattern for the past couple years so um, yeah Leonard, Leonard Williams uh, great player seven sacks with your sack leader and then your interception leader you got Marcus Gilchrist and Marcus Williams with two uh, respectively so we're gonna move on to the free agents now um, some of them you should keep some of them you shouldn't so let's get on to that uh, first up oh first up James Carpenter, left guard, and Brian Winters, right guard. They were free agents, but they were signed. So now they're signed, so we won't mention them. Or I don't know if they were free agents or not, but it just says they were signed. So they got re-signed. So that's a good thing. James Carpenter and Brian Winters, one of the better guard duos in the league. So um, not elite, but definitely one of the better ones. So that's a good uh, thing that they signed there. Solidify the offensive line, and then they got to work on the tackle section next. Uh, then we'll probably get into Nick Mangold soon, too. So, uh, yeah, Ryan Fitzpatrick, start off with him. He does not deserve to be a Jet anymore. Um, I mean, he did play like a Jet this year, but that, that's <laughs> jokes aside. But um, he did, and he kind of stole the money from the Jets. The guy went to Harvard, so, I mean, I'm sure he knows how to uh, swindle his way uh, to get some more money, and that's exactly what he did. He, he stood out almost a whole off season just to get paid twelve million dollars and still screw up their season and play like a jet. So um, do not resign him. Not definitely not worth a get rid of him. Geno Smith, it's up to you because Geno Smith. Sure, sure you said uh, you spent a second round pick on the guy a couple years back. I believe it was second round pick, and. Um, not that if you resign him that he's going to become out as your starter, but you definitely, when you do draft the quarterback, which you should, you should definitely draft the quarterback. If you do draft the quarterback, matter of fact, I'll say when you do because you've you got to. When you do draft the quarterback and he is supposed to be your starter for you, you do want somebody that knows the system a little bit more, a veteran experience, just in case things go wrong. I know Geno Smith isn't very good, but it's better than nothing. It's better than picking somebody up, up off the streets. Uh, Geno Smith has had some success for you, like in his rookie year. Um, has he been elite in any kind of way? No, but still, just keep Geno Smith. If things work out, things work out really good in the preseason. Your quarterback that you draft is playing really well, whether it be Deshaun Kaiser, Deshaun Watson, Mitch Trubinsky, uh, Trubisky. Um, if they play really well for you in the season, in the preseason, then I, you know, you could let go of Geno Smith, sign him for a one-year contract just as a preseason deal. Um, I'm sure he's not going to care too much about that because I don't think anybody else is going to pick him up in the league. Uh, or, I mean, he'll probably be a backup. And I think the only chance he has being a starter is still with the Jets. So, um, very slim. But, yeah, I'd say keep Geno Smith. But if you get rid of him, I could see why. So, that's that. Kellen Davis, he's old. Get rid of him. Um, and... Also, Severian Jenkins, I hope. I don't see him on the free agent list. I think he's a free agent. He should be. Um, because you guys picked him up in the season. But anyway, definitely keep Austin Severian Jenkins. He's a good talent. Um, is he anything crazy special? No, but he's better than any of the wide uh, any of the tight ends you have on your roster. So definitely uh, keep uh, Austin uh, Severian Jenkins and get rid of Kellen Davis. 
Next, Tanner Purdom, long snapper. It's up to you, who cares? Um, Bruce Carter, inside linebacker. I say you keep him because this inside linebacking core is going to need some competition, definitely. Darren Lee, your first round pick. Pretty underwhelming season. He's somebody that I, I really wanted the Giants to pick up because I loved his pass coverage ability and the fact that he's an all-around good middle linebacker, but he definitely did not show that this year. I'm pretty happy that we didn't pick him up. Um, so, and then you've got uh, David Harris, who's a, um, uh, your leading tackler, but he still didn't do very well. That inside linebacker duo really didn't do so well, so I guess you want to keep Bruce Carter for some competition. Um, so, yeah, if you get it for some small money, then keep him, uh, let him compete. Moving on, Benjamin Ijalana. Uh, he's a tackle. He's a backup tackle. He could definitely keep him because you, he did start for you in a couple a couple spots, like right tackle and left tackle, um, when there was injuries, and he actually played pretty well. He didn't play pretty bad, so definitely keep him. Use him as a swing tackle. Should things go wrong and on that offensive line, he should be the first one to respond, and you put him uh, put him out there. So uh, keep Benjamin Ijalana. And then Corey Lemonier on your outside linebacking core. Um, you can get rid of him. I, I could think you could pick up more talent. Um, and there are definitely some, some talent here on that outside linebacking core that uh, Corey Lemonier is pretty expendable. Uh, moving on to Antonio Allen. Um, I, I don't know. Just keep him for now because Darrell Revis, who knows what's going to happen with him. I think even if he does stay with the Jets, he's probably going to get cut. I, I expect to, fully expect, as a matter of fact, to get cut after what happened with his situation and the fact that he's probably going to be moving to safety. Uh, they really don't really need a safety right now. Marcus Gilchrist and Calvin Pryor are pretty good. So you don't need um, Antonio... Um, uh, that's weird because Antonio Allen is listed as a quarterback sometimes, a corner sometimes, and then now he's listed as a safety. So, uh, Mark, uh, Antonio Allen, backup safety, keep him then. Keep him. This is a backup safety then. Sorry, guys, because it's saying cornerback on um, one website I went on and free, free, uh, free safety on the other. So, uh, Josh Martin, outside linebacker, get rid of him. Moving on. Definitely, you can pick up better talent. Um, let's go on to the draft. Before we get on to the draft, uh, there your past draft. Uh, let's go on and get on to your top five needs this year. Um, you've got quarterback, definitely. You've got wide receiver because Brandon Marshall he may get released. Uh, we'll see what happens with him. And then Eric Decker's Eric Decker. He's not a number one wide receiver in my opinion. And then you got some talent in the depth part of your wide receiving core, but nobody in that intermediate level like a third wide receiver, fourth wide receiver talent. Uh, Robbie Anderson is pretty good for you, but you want to get somebody else in there. Devin Smith is pretty good. You want to get, I mean, none of them really have shown that they're, you know, starter level talent. Jalen Marshall is pretty good. Undrafted free agent that you guys found out of Ohio State. But still, I think you should definitely get um, some more wide receivers there. Um, you need some more, you know, top talent there. Uh, because it's pretty even there. It's pretty even as far as talent. It's pretty uh, um, uh, back heavy, so uh, front heavy with, with Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker. Then the rest of the people are kind of just eh. So moving on, cornerback is definitely in need. You got um, probably your best corner because I assume Darrell Reeves doesn't stay there. And if he does, I mean he's still not good. Uh, your best corner we're looking at is uh, Buster Screen. Uh, that little dude it probably mostly used as your uh, slot corner. So you definitely need a corner there. And um, yeah, moving on. And then offensive lineman too. Uh, definitely got to work up on getting a replacement for Nick Mangold. He could get released. We could probably see him getting released this year um, just for cap reasons. Got injury problems with like Ryan Clady and things like that. And then um, Brino Giam Giacomini. Better, better tackles, but they're injury prone. You can definitely work on the offensive line a little bit more. Uh, get some more depth in there, whatever you need to do. Uh, inside linebacker is another one as the last need is because that linebacking core is pretty good on the outside, but the inside definitely has some potential, but not enough production. So go ahead and get yourself another inside linebacker and get some competition in there. Look at your draft. Your draft was... 
Not really good at all, actually. Uh, I kind of liked it in the beginning with uh, Darren Lee, Jordan Jenkins, but Christian Hackenberg, that's probably one of the worst quarterback picks I've seen in a, in a while. Christian Hackenberg, I had as one of the worst quarterbacks I had coming into the draft last year. I just hated his accuracy. Um, a lot of people were saying he was going top five before that college season started, and he really didn't show up to be very great. I fully expected him because I knew somebody was going to pull the trigger on him. There was talks during the draft that the Broncos would pull the trigger on him in the first round. Uh, I don't know what the Jets were thinking. I mean, they know more than us when it comes to who they were looking at, who other teams were looking at. But I assume that other teams were looking at Christian Hackenberg in the uh, second round, that they had to pick him up, or the third round, that they had to pick him up. Uh, I did not expect Christian Hackenberg to go in the third round. I thought he, he's a fourth round, fifth round pick, in my opinion. And he, he showed that this year. He really did, he didn't do anything. So, and then he didn't have a decent preseason whatsoever either. So that's that. Uh, Darren Lee did not have a good season. Um, only had like seven, was 73 tackles, a sack. Well, 73 tackles was second in, in, on the team, but that's not really saying much. They didn't even have a 100-plus uh, tackler this year. So and then Jordan Jenkins, 41 tackles, two and a half sacks, one fumble. That's all right. Uh, Justin Burris, uh, he had an interception in the fourth. He came out of the fourth round. Brandon Shell, he's not very bad. He's a good backup uh, depth tackle. He did start in some games. Uh, I believe that right tackle. So, uh, Locke Edwards, you drafted a punter. I mean, I can't complain about that in the seventh round. And then Sharon Peak, he had 19 recession for 80, 186 yards. So, he had pretty good production for a seventh round pick. That's not bad at all. So, um, all around, their draft wasn't very good in the top, but towards the end, they got pretty better. They, they got some, uh, I'm not going to call them gems, but. Um, you know, players that they could use that they drafted late in the, the draft. So um, that's the, the Jets season recap and 2017 preview. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, what do you guys think the Jets are going to be next year? Are they going to be the same team they were this year, 4-12 and team, playing like Jets? Or do you think they'll, you know, make a comeback with a quarterback? And who do you think is the best quarterback that could fit this uh, this? Uh, the Jets in the draft. I'm talking Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Kaiser, um, uh, Mitch Trubisky, or any of the other, uh, like Davis Webb or whatever his name is, uh, or Mahomes or something like that. Who do you think is probably the best quarterback that will fit the Jets in the upcoming 2017 draft? That's all I got for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.